So you want to animate as a sunset like this, or a full day cycle, or change in weather, but the default volumetric clouds are just depressing. And how do you even make them move? Sure, it's a start, but compared to real skies, they need some work. Luckily for us, someone has already done the work. It was just hidden from us in a sample project. And the best thing about it is that it's free to download for everyone. So in this video, I'll show you how to use the clouds from Hillside Sample to animate time lapses like this. So the first thing we got to do is to download the Hillside sample itself. For this go to Epic Games Launcher, Unreal Engine and Samples. Here you can get an overview of what's inside of this project. There's a ton of cool stuff to study besides clouds, so feel free to play around with it. To download it, there will be free button here, click on it and then click on create project. Pick a location where you want to save it and the engine version and click on create. Be aware though, this sample is over 60 gigabytes. Besides, the launcher saves it actually in the vault cache. For, in my case, because I was creating it on a separate disk, I actually needed over 120 gigabytes of space just because there is a copy of it stored in the vault cache. So be aware of it. I'll see if I can just save the cloud separately for you and let you know in the top comment of the video. Once you're inside of the hillside sample, go to hillside, effects, then clouds and materials. Here you can find several presets for different moods of the sky. I find this one, the last one, the most universal and this is the one we are going to use. To copy it into our project, right click on it, go to asset actions and migrate. Make sure that all of those boxes are ticked, especially hillside material parameters, we will need it later. Click OK and navigate to the content folder of your project and just in the content folder click select folder. Once you are in your project, make sure the volumetrics plugin is enabled. So just go to plugins, search for it and enable it. And also that there is sky atmosphere in your scene. Add volumetric cloud actor. Now we have the default volumetric clouds. So let's search for that material. So let's go to hillside effects, clouds, materials and find the material we are after. So this is this one. Go to your volumetric cloud actor, scroll down to cloud material and drag and drop it into the slot. Now we have those beautiful clouds in our scene and can use them for anything we like. Let's adjust some parameters to make it look even better. First, let's go to our directional light, scroll down to atmosphere and clouds and enable cast shadows and clouds on atmosphere and cast cloud shadows. This one is a big one. As you see, it changes a lot about how the scene looks because this makes the lighting change based on whether or not the sun is shining through the clouds or not. Now navigate to volumetric clouds, change the layer parameters. I like something like 3.5 for the bottom and 11.3 layer height. Now increase tracing max distance to at least 100. I will, I will leave it at 200. Now go to cloud tracing and enable it. For view counts, let's set something like 4. And for shadow tracing distance, 30. Okay, nice. Now I really like how those clouds look. I think it's a perfect combination of realism and a little bit of cinematic look. But of course, feel free to open up the material instance and play around with the parameters too. Just keep in mind, it's more of an art than science, so always have references of the skies you want to replicate. Now, how do we create the sunset time-lapse of the scene? If I just move around the sun, yeah, the lighting changes, but the clouds don't move anywhere. So let's see how we can make the clouds naturally move as the time goes on. Here I have a sequencer. This is what we use to make animations in Unreal. I have set my camera and animated the sun to go from 8 a.m. until 2 p.m. If you don't know how to do that, check out my last video where I went in depth on how to use SunSky plugin for geo-accurate sun animations. This time, however, I want to create sunset animation. So for the first hour, I will set 9 a.m. And for the last one, I'll go for 7.40, so 7.7. .7. To make the clouds move, we have two options. We can either play around with wind vector and we find it by opening up material instance under globals uh, scrolling down to wind vector, 
Let's see what happens if you speed up by 50, but honestly it's a guessing game and unnecessary. The much better way is to increase the speed of the in-game simulation. Luckily, the material of the clouds was already set up to account for it. All we need to do is to add a time dilation track. You find it by going to your sequencer, clicking on track and time dilation track. It was added to the sequencer and we can increase the speed of the time by changing this value in here. As you can see, the benefit of it was that not only the clouds started to move faster, but also the water and actually also the wind on the tree was sped up. So it's a much faster way to control time in your game. Now, but how much do we speed up our time? You can get into the technicalities of by how much we are actually speeding it up. In our case, we pack roughly one hour into 10 seconds. That means we're actually speeding up as a time by a factor of 360. But that's way too much. Since we are dealing with a simulation, not real life, you got to play around with that value until it feels right. The best way to do it is to look at an actual reference footage of Cloud's time-lapse and compare it with your scene. I have found that for one hour, a value of about 15 works quite good. If you render the animation, we will notice that it doesn't render all the frames. In this case, only 40 frames were rendered, which is exactly 15 times less than 600, the amount that we wanted to render. The reason is that time dilation is only partially supported by the sequencer. So if we set our time dilation to 15, it means that we need to increase the amount of frames that we want to render by a factor of 15. So let's go to our playback options and set the end frame to 9000. Extend everything to fit the timeline. Great, now it actually renders the amount of frames you want. And the clouds differ naturally. In real life, however, the clouds don't just stay in one spot. Likely, this material has a setting Sky Texture Placement, which does exactly what we need. Naturally, you would think, if you drag volumetric clouds into the sequencer, you will be able to control it. But the only thing you could do from here is only to change the material itself, not the parameters. This is where we touch on the topic of material parameter collections. But going into details about it is way outside of the scope of this tutorial. Luckily though, they were already set up in the hillset sample and we can just use the existing ones. But if you're interested in changing your own materials from the sequencer, let me know in the comments below. If enough people request it, I'll do a tutorial on it. To change Sky Texture Placement, click on Add the Track, go to Material Parameter Collection Track, search for Hillside and click on it. Under Hillside Material Parameters, click on Plus and choose Sky Placement Offset. Go to the first frame and add a key. Then go to the last frame and set, set your offset parameters. I found that 0.2 for roughly one hour feels right and I just want to rotate it a little bit, so I'll set 0.1 for the G. Now our clouds are moving towards the horizon. Just one more thing I would like to change is to set those keys to linear because our time is linear and I want the movement of the clouds to match that. To make the clouds move into another direction, go to the last frame again and just play around with those numbers. If I put negative numbers here, it will start moving into the opposite direction. Play around with those numbers until they're moving into the direction you would want them to move. Now we are ready to render. So let's click here to render it out, click on settings, one more nuance to do is to change the uh, file name into frame number relative. If you don't do it, you will get this error. Choose a location, click on accept and click on render. Now the render is complete. What's left for us to do is to render it into a video file using any editing program. In the last video, I briefly showed the steps required to do it in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. If you don't know how to do it, the video will be in the description and here is a time code for it. Now to render any other time of the day, let's duplicate our sequencer. I want full day, so let's call it full day. Open it up and do it basically the same way. Set the hour you're going after in the first hour, uh, the last hour in your last hour, let's say nine. So we went from roughly one hour of time to filming five hours of time. To account for it, let's increase time dilation. Let's not go by five, let's go by four, I think it's a bit better. And since we increase time dilation, let's increase the frame count as well. What we want is 20 seconds of footage with a frame rate of uh, 30. So we need 600 frames, but we are speeding up time by 60. So let's multiply it by 60. And this gives us the actual number we need to set in here. Fill the whole timeline. I'll just change the camera because I like how uh, daylighting is displayed on the architecture. Click on tracking it again. One more thing to adjust is sky placement offset 
you're filming five times more actual time so let's increase it by five and render it out make sure frame number is relative click accept and click render to animate different weather conditions going from clear sky to cloudy or fully covered like here uh, we can animate cloud coverage so let's duplicate our sequencer again go to hillside material parameters in the sequencer and go for coverage offset for the first frame let's set something around minus 0.2 somewhere in the middle i like the value of 0.3 about here and at the end let's clear it up again and i want it to happen a bit sooner before actual sunset happens and this is what we get If you like this video, please consider subscribing, I have many interesting ideas coming and if you want me to cover any particular topic, feel free to let me know in the comments below. But also, if you have any related or unrelated questions, just go ahead and ask. One of the benefits of a small channel like mine is that I can really find the time to pay attention to every single comment. Feel free to take advantage of that. Till the next time.